In the heat of the recent political exchanges between President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and his predecessor, former President Rodrigo Duterte, the latter threatened that he would move for the separation of Mindanao from the Philippines. For the starter, the 7,641 islands of the Philippines are divided into three main island groups. Luzon is the largest and most populous island in the Philippines. Located in the northern portion of the Philippines archipelago, it is the economic and political center of the nation, being home to the country's capital city, Manila, and the national capital region of Metro Manila. Visayas Island Group is located in the central part of the archipelago, the smallest in terms of total land area and least populated among the three divisions. Cebu City is the biggest city and serves as the regional center of central Visayas. Mindanao is the southernmost region of the Philippine archipelago, the second biggest island group, both in population and land area. There is nothing new to the call for independence of Mindanao because there were other attempts in the past to sever the island from the Philippine Republic. But why does the idea of independence or separation from the Philippines continue to re-echo in Mindanao leaders' rhetoric, whenever they are disgruntled over policies enunciated in Metro Manila? Foremost, is the fact that their island has long been treated as a mere appendage by Imperial Manila. A cursory examination of Mindanao's history will reveal that its development classically followed the colonial pattern. Here are the current economic statistics of Mindanao as compared to the rest of the country. According to Philippine statistics, the entire island group of Mindanao contributed 3.4 trillion pesos to the Philippines economy in 2022. Approximately 17.2% of the country's gross domestic product. Compared to Visayas with a GDP of 2.7 trillion pesos or 13.7% of the country's economy. However, Mindanao has the least developed division in the Philippines with an average GDP per capita of 127,020 pesos, compared to Visayas with a GDP per capita of 128,670 pesos, while Luzon excluding Metro Manila has a GDP per capita of 149,140 pesos while Metro Manila GDP per capita is 439,320 pesos. Meanwhile, two out of the six regions of Mindanao are amongst the poorest in the country, with Bonsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao with a GDP per capita of 62,990 pesos, and Region 12 with a GDP of 98,610 pesos. Mindanao also obtained the highest poverty incidence among families in major island groups with 25% considered poor. Bit higher to the Visayas with a poverty incidence of 23.1% while Luzon has the lowest poverty incidence of 10.8%. Likewise, the top two regions in the Philippines with the highest poverty incidence is also located in Mindanao. Bonsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao has a poverty threshold of 36.6%, and Zamboanga Peninsula has a poverty incidence of 31.6%. In addition, the Bonsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao has also the lowest minimum daily wage of 341 pesos, followed by Region 13 or Caraga Region, with minimum daily wage of 370 pesos. Mindanao covers a third of the Philippines' land area. It is home to a quarter of the country's people. It produces around 60% of total corn output, another 60% of total coconut yield, a quarter of total rice harvest, has 60% of the country's total mineral resources, and is the leading producer of rubber and palm oil. The BARMM, in particular, is the second biggest contributor to total fish catch, is the main producer of banana and pineapple for exports, and contributes nearly 40% to the Philippine food supply. Agriculture, forestry, and fishing make up more than 40% of Mindanao's market, being the country's largest supplier of major crops such as pineapples and bananas. While the region's economy is predominantly agri-based, it is now developing into a center for agro-industrial business, trade, and tourism. Mindanao was treated as a supplier of food and raw materials to the industries and inhabitants of Luzon. 
Roads were built to access plantation, mining, or forestry enclaves which led to the nearest ports where ships were waiting to transport food and raw materials elsewhere. Inter and intra-regional was hardly promoted as there was almost no connectivity within Mindanao for the past decades. The budgets allocated to Mindanao, for the bulk of its history, never reached the size of its contribution in terms of land area, population, poverty, potential for growth, and contribution to the national economy. Underinvestment for Mindanao development is the rule rather than the exception. On the downside, it is also in Mindanao where poverty is the worst. The long history of conflict on the island and the presence of private armed groups undeniably contributed. Then there are policies formulated in Imperial Manila that have adversely affected the development potentials of Mindanao. For instance, there is the Cavitage Law, which stipulates that only domestic shippers can bring goods from one local port to another. This prevents foreign vessels docking in Manila from picking up cargo destined for Mindanao, which results in higher shipping costs for Mindanao producers and entrepreneurs. This explains why agricultural products from Mindanao, like corn and vegetables, are much more expensive compared to those sourced from Thailand, China, or the US. Poverty, inequality, and lack of access to resources or opportunities, can lead to dissatisfaction, and fuel citizens to rebellion and want to secede from one's country. Former Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte's call for independent Mindanao, clarified that this was not the start of a rebellion, but rather a continuation of the advocacy of the people of Mindanao. The earliest was during American colonial rule when big American corporations lobbied the U.S. Congress to declare Mindanao, Sulu, and Palawan as separate territories. This was to purportedly protect its predominantly Muslim population and allow foreign investors to develop its rich agricultural lands. The move like the Bacon Bill was successfully thwarted by Filipino politicians. It took another 40 years for the Mindanao independence call to again erupt, in the aftermath of the infamous Jabita massacre of 1968 that saw scores of young Muslim soldiers murdered. Datu Udtag Madalam, former governor of Cotabato province, established the Muslim independence movement to ensure that his fellow Muslims would not suffer discrimination from the island's dominant Christian population. He later renamed it the Mindanao independence movement to secure wider sympathy. The banner of establishing an independent Mindanao was later carried on by the Moro National Liberation Front MNLF, under Nur Misuari. In the early 1970s, a wholesale rebellion led by the MNLF broke out. The rebels demanded a separate state for Muslims so that they could exercise their customs, beliefs, and religion, free from discrimination and oppression by the Christian government holding office in Luzon. Misuari eventually signed a peace deal with the government in 1996 but the rebellion continued, this time led by the Moro Islamic Liberation Front led by Hashem Salamat and later by Murad Ibrahim. Ibrahim also signed a peace pact with the Aquino administration in 2014 but it was during the presidency of Duterte that the Bonsamoro Autonomous Region for Muslim Mindanao BARMM, was established. The BARMM enjoys autonomy as it has its own parliamentary system, whose members are mostly Muslims, to govern the region. The proposed establishment of the Federal Republic of Mindanao with no less than former President Rodrigo Duterte becoming the interim head of state. They will pursue the independence of Mindanao peacefully using the Kosovo model. Fed up with being left behind in development and the Manila bureaucracy, Duterte emphasized a peaceful secession process through legal means and consultation with the people. This announcement was triggered by the move of the Congress to amend the 1987 Philippine Constitution via the People's Initiative. To recall, Mindanao and Sulu were an independent protectorate of the United States occupied through conquest or acts of war and were not included in the territory ceded by Spain through the 1898 Treaty of Paris and the Declaration of Independence in the same year. Mindanao is one of the wealthiest regions in the country in terms of natural resources and contributes significantly to its GDP. Supporters of independence argue that Mindanao has been financially supporting other regions and would be better off managing its own resources and investments. While some have expressed a desire for secession, others see an opportunity to leverage the region's abundant natural resources for economic growth. 
Mindanao as an independent federal state. Proponents of the independent Mindanao movement brought up the statehoods of Singapore and Timor-Leste, but the conditions that paved the way for their independence are different from the realities in Mindanao. Singapore, for instance, did not gain independence voluntarily. It was expelled by Malaysia in 1965, due to irreconcilable differences in ideology and politics. Timor-Leste, meanwhile, is a case that inspires Duterte's call for independent Mindanao. According to the proposal of a Mindanao secession is a legal process that will be brought to the United Nations, just like what happened to Timor-Leste. The UN organized a referendum in Timor-Leste in 1999, the watershed vote that resulted in its independence from Indonesia. However, the young nation's journey of self-determination was bloody, and its experience does not necessarily bear strong similarities to that of Mindanao. While there were state-sanctioned killings that triggered the Moro insurgency in the southern Philippines, Timor-Liste had to grapple with what numerous scholars believe is a genocide at the tail end of the 20th century. The atrocities during that time prompted the rise and consolidation of pro-independence organizations, which Mindanao does not have at the moment. The downfall of military dictator Suharto also ushered in an era of democratic reforms, and the succeeding president, B.J. Habibi, allowed the people of Timor-Leste to pick either full independence from Indonesia or special autonomy. The assertion by the Mindanao independence movement that it will pursue the Kosovo model would seem to mean that they are looking to a unilateral declaration of independence, which is leaning on the support of powerful allied and friendly states and nations. The Philippine government has spoken strongly against the call for an independent Mindanao. It seems implausible that the Marcos administration would one day just let political foes in Mindanao do what they want, such as enabling a referendum on secession. After all, the government has already been adamant about quashing Duterte's out-of-left-field proposal that made national headlines. Mindanao as an independent state has a gross domestic product of 3.4 trillion pesos, with a GDP per capita of 127,020 pesos. It has a population of 28 million. Davao City will be the largest city in the economic center of the newborn country. Other growth centers are Cagayan de Oro, General Santos, Zamboanga City, Batuan City, Iligan City, Cotabato City, and Pagadian City.